Hi, Brent Tech here, where tech is made simple. So Microsoft has rolled out the latest optional bug fix C release update for Windows 11 23H2, which they made available late yesterday in my region on the 27th of May. Now, this is the same update I posted on when it was still in final preview just a couple of days ago and has now made its way to the stable channel. So if you do decide to install the update, because it is an optional update, on 23H2, your OS build will be bumped up to 22631.5413. Now, we have six new features that are rolling out gradually. And a gradual rollout means a release update is rolled out over a period of time. So you may or may not see these new features and fixes I'm going to mention now as soon as you install the update, if you do decide to install the update. So rolling out gradually. The first new feature is you can now open Copilot on Windows with Win and C. And when you get the update, if we head to our settings, personalization, and text input, Microsoft says that you can personalize your Copilot key and Win and C at any time with the existing customized Copilot key on keyboard, which will be found when you get the update under Settings, Personalization, Text Input. And then sticking with Copilot, there's a new feature called Press to Talk. And I'm just going to mention this one and how this works. Microsoft says you hold the Copilot key or Win and C if your keyboard doesn't have one for two seconds. You press escape or stay silent for a few seconds to end the call. And you can also use Alt and Spacebar to talk with Copilot on Windows. And you can interact with Copilot using your voice and receive instant responses while continuing your different tasks and work. So those are two new features rolling out for Copilot. And there's an improvement rolling out for search on the taskbar where Microsoft has improved support for web search providers for the European Economic Area, EEA, including with increased discoverability, so that's region-specific. And another new feature for settings is the new FAQs on the Settings System About page, which already has rolled out to Windows 10. And... I think the reason Microsoft pushed the FAQs out to Windows 10 before Windows 11 was because of the upcoming end of support of Windows 10. But Microsoft says with this feature, you can now find answers to commonly asked questions about your PC and Windows 11 in this new section on the About System page. And it covers topics like system setup, performance, and compatibility all in one place, according to Microsoft. And I think this is more geared towards your average Joe and not really your, you know, your tech-savvy person. And just to mention the next, which is listed as a new feature, but it's only affecting system admins. We can now configure taskbar policies so users can unpin specific apps, ensuring they are not repinned during the next policy refresh. And the next new feature is for those of you in the EA where there are some new updates to the widgets on the lock screen for devices in the EEA. And Microsoft says that the lock screen weather widget now supports customization. So when you get this feature, if we just head into personalization and we head to lock screen, when this feature rolls out, you'll be able to customize the lock screen weather widget which is currently not the case. So on this page, you'll be able to select the Customize Widget option from the Weather Widget More Options menu. And Microsoft says that more widgets will be customizable in the future. So I think that's a nice touch, um, being able to customize and choose which widgets appear on the lock screen. And hopefully that rolls out to more regions and not the just the EEA. And then just to mention the next... There's a new Windows Share feature when you drag a local file from File Explorer or your desktop. A tray now will appear at the top of your screen. And then what you can do with this is you can drop the file into a suggested app or select more, which will be the three-dot menu to open the Windows Share window. And then we've got 
Improvements and a fix rolling out for input, where the fix is voice typing won't start from the touch keyboard when using the Chinese simplified narrow layout. And the second is when using the symbol section of the touch keyboard, pressing the key to change pages might unexpectedly insert a character into password fields. And then there's a fix for voice access where it might stop responding with error working on it when dictating. So that's a nice accessibility little improvement. And then those are the features and fixes as mentioned rolling out gradually. Now, because this is a non-security update, it does include quality improvements. And I'm just going to go through some of these, uh, not all, that I think you may be interested in. There's a fix for a blue screen, which is always important, where the update addresses an issue where devices encounter a blue screen exception with error code system service exception. So that's important. And there's a HoloLens fix where Microsoft fixed an issue that stopped the Holo Camera app from saving pictures on HoloLens due to incorrect folder access and a related problem with mixed reality capture. And there's a memory leak that's been fixed, which is always good because this will improve performance, where the update addresses an issue in the input service that causes increased memory usage, potentially impacting performance in multi-user, multilingual and remote desktop usage. And then there's a fix for the Windows shell, which would be your taskbar, start menu, explorer, and so on, where the update addresses an issue with explorer and the start menu stop stopping to work when a device is connected to an AAD account. And then the last one, just to mention, uh, the Windows update service apparently stopped working when devices running Windows 11, 22H2, or 23H2 tried to download the Windows 24H2 feature update through Windows Server Update Services, WSUS. So that's also quite important. And those are just a couple of bug fixes that are taking place under the hood. So guys, that's more or less what's new with this latest optional update, KB5058502. And as I always mention with optional updates, only install optional updates that roll out towards the end of the month if you're experiencing any issues that I've mentioned or that are mentioned with the update because these optional updates are known to cause issues from time to time as you may well know if you've watched this channel and if you don't install the update now what's going to happen as you may also know is that next month these fixes and improvements will be rolled out on the second Tuesday of June with the compulsory mandatory security update that will roll out on the 10th of June next month. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.